This quick clip is about how strings can be useful when multiplying. All right, first of all, a string would be a string of numbers or a series of related facts that helps you solve a problem. And these related facts would probably be friendly facts or easier facts than the original problem. So if the original problem was 14 times 17, uh, two pretty unfriendly numbers, probably not something the average person is going to do in their head. But do we know 14 times 1? Yeah, that's 14. Okay, so let's start with some easy ones. Do we know 14 times 2? Okay, double it. That's 28. Do we know 14 times 4? Sure, double that again. That's 56. What about 14 times 10? Yeah. 140. 14 times 1 is 14. Place 1, 0. Okay, so then our next string could maybe be 14 times 5. 5 is half of 10, so whatever we get here would need to be half of 140. Okay, so that would be 70. And here I probably have what I need to show 17 groups of 14. Do I have some things that can add up to 17? Why, yes I do. I've got a 10, I've got a 5, and I've got a 2. Together that makes 17 groups of 14. So all I need to do is take my partial products here and add those together. So I can do 140 plus the 70 plus the 28 to get me 238. So that's how a string or a series of numbers can be really useful for figuring out a much more difficult problem. Let's try one more. All right, let's say that we give students the tricky problem of 4 times 39. Not very friendly numbers, not going to be something that they can instantly get in their heads. So let's start with the fact that they do know. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 40 then would be 160. And so 4 times 39 would be one group of 4 less than 160. One group less because 39 is one group less than 40. So all we need to do is realize that each group contains 4. I need to take one group away from 160 and that would get me 156 as the final answer. So really what we're doing is some mental math strings that help a student come up with the answer to a complicated one. Here's one last one for us today. Okay, 16 times 17. Most of the kids would go, ah, can't do that in my head. Well, yes you can. This string lends itself very nicely to doubling and halving. So let's take a look at what that would be like. Okay, so have would be the verb for half. But we're not going to say we half it because half is a noun. So the verb have, we're going to have this. So half of 16 would be 8. And if we're cutting one in half, then we need to double the other part. So double 17 would be 34. Let's continue down that string of halving and doubling, okay? Half of eight is four, but then I need to double my 34. I'd get 68. Still not really friendly, so let's keep going until we get to some friendly numbers. Have it, double it. Well, 60 doubled, if I think of this as 60 plus eight, 60 doubled would be 120. And 8 doubled would be 16. So 120 plus 16 would get me 136. There's some good mental math there, too. Well, we're getting pretty friendly. Now, could I have and double it one last time? Absolutely. 136 doubled would be 272.
And I know this one, one times 272 equals 272. So my final answer of 16 times 17 equals 272. And I never even had to solve that original problem. So by using a string of facts that can be sort of natural, we can double and have, and that becomes a string of facts that gets us to a super easy one at the end, and we can get our final answer. And that's it for number strings.